Well, as you know, it's been uh, an interesting day for me. Uh, kind of beginning yesterday at about four o'clock, I, uh, I received an email saying that somebody had accused me of being a racist uh, and they, they thought that I shouldn't be able to serve anymore at my church and they threatened um, essentially to, to go public with this information. Um, about me being a racist and being a part of a show called Louder with Crowder, which obviously a lot of you guys, if not all of you, are uh, people who watch that show. You know who Steven Crowder is. And um, they said if, if I didn't, uh, uh, if I wasn't removed from serving at my church, that uh, they would have no problem taking this up with activists and local uh, leaders in the community to make sure that this church continued to be a place that was safe for people of color um, like this. And um, you know, I, I initially was very frustrated that somebody had called me a racist without giving me an idea of why they were calling me a racist. The only thing that I did see in the post uh, or in the email that was copied to me was that we dressed up as Vikings uh, in the last live stream. And I'm not sure what Vikings we offended by doing that. But uh, obviously, when we do cultural appropriation, uh, a lot of people can be offended by that or they can take it out of context. The whole context is the cultural appropriation and being offended by people who maybe have cornrows or somebody who wears a piece of clothing uh, that is typically worn by another uh, a person's race or something like that is silly. It's just silly to be offended by those things unless they're done in mockery, right? If they're doing it to mock you, that's one thing. If they're doing it because they just like the clothes, that's not a bad thing. And so we tend to pick uh, uh, June as our cultural appropriation month just so that we can poke fun at that. We're using comedy and humor to attack issues of the day, which has been done forever. Um, look at all of the famous historical acts that we see uh, in comedy. A lot of times they were addressing these very points in society during their time where they're saying, this is silly, you can't say these words. Like there's you know, these famous stand-up bits where they talk about the words that you can't say in the bit, right? Um, and that's what we're trying to do with this. So no, no offense is intended to anybody on this stuff. But sometimes we understand that people uh, get their feelings hurt. So I do have an update for you. Uh, the church is cool. Everything's good. Uh, the godly way to deal with a situation like this where you have something against your brother, the first thing that you do is you go to your brother and you tell them, right? And then if your brother doesn't listen, and this is prescribed in the Bible, if your bro brother doesn't listen, you widen the circle. And if you, after widening the circle, they don't listen uh, anymore, you continue to widen the circle. Um, and that's how church discipline is always supposed to work. So in the biblical sense of how to deal with stuff like this, you go sit down, you talk through it, you try to find some common ground or at least some common understanding of where the other person's coming from. In this case, I can't think of something that I said that was just obviously racist. I've, I've challenged facts. I've challenged what statistics really mean, right? When you dig down into them, I've challenged what polls have mean. I've challenged that Black Lives Matter as a movement can sometimes be very violent. Um, and everybody says it's peaceful. I've challenged that idea while at the same time making sure to say that we don't want racism in our police force. We don't want racism in corporate America. We don't want racism in our government. We want everybody to be treated equal. That's what we're fighting for is people's rights. No matter what color you are, we could care less, right? Everybody should have the same rights. It, but it feels like we have to say that every single time we mention a statistic that we're trying to make sure that we have accurate information about. We need accurate data. We don't need an emotional response. We need accurate information to be able to solve a problem. We've talked about this on the show so many times. We're not defending the actions of people when we start talking about, well, wait a minute, what really happened? All we're saying is that it matters what really happened. It matters what the actual data are. For example, if you grow up in America thinking that you're two and a half times more likely to be killed by a cop because you're black, you're probably going to think, my gosh, the cops have it in for me. And your perception becomes reality. And the only thing that you can do when you hear over and over and over that it's systematic, it's systematic, it's systematic, is that you get rid of the system. You burn it down, right? You get so frustrated because it's systematic. You go defund the police. You try to abolish the police force, right? That is the natural reaction for some people when they hear that over and over again. And so all we're trying to say is like, look, I understand that that's how you feel. And I'm sorry that you feel that way. You've genuinely gotten to a place where you're afraid. I get it. But here's the thing. The facts of the matter do not line up with two and a half times the number of black people being shot than white people. Not if you take into account police interactions. That's how you do it. We talked about that too. You don't say that I'm still one of the top tight ends in the country. It doesn't matter. 
In the general population of males, yes, I could probably be in some kind of top percentage of people that play the position. And if you include people who've never played football before, yeah, sure, <laughs> probably so. But if you put me in the realm where it matters, in college football or in NFL, no, not at all, <laughs> right? So saying it's just the general population and not taking into account, well, how do cops interact with people when they deal with them? right? That's where statistics can lead you awry. And so I, I wanted to take just a quick second and say, uh, it looks like our church is going to be doing a fantastic job with this, calling for us to be able to sit down and talk through these issues, to come to some common ground, to find out uh, what really is driving this, if they really do think I'm racist, if there's something else maybe going on. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you guys updated. I'm, I'm very happy to report that that is the case. But here's something that I will say. In this entire fight uh, that we've been dealing with over the past weeks, months, right? Pointing to somebody and calling them a name because you disagree with them and essentially labeling them something uh, to get them in trouble is not the way we communicate. We have to understand that we need dialogue. We need to be able to sit down with one another and talk when we disagree, not yell racist, right? Not yell science denier, not yell, he's a witch, right? We've been doing this forever, commie, right? Every single time we do that in history, it doesn't work out well for people because all we have to do is accuse. So put, put this situation that I was dealing with, let's say that yesterday, instead of my church getting an email, let's say that I worked for a public company and my boss or the CEO of the company received an email about me. And then they said, hey, if you guys don't get rid of this person, we're gonna go and we're gonna get the local media involved and local activists and we're gonna protest because you guys are no longer a safe place for people of color. They might have fired me, right? It might have been in their best interest to say, you know what, we don't wanna deal with any of those problems. We will just, we'll just let this person go and we'll call it even, right? Well, now my career is ruined. Now my name has been tarnished. Who's gonna to wanna to hire me the next time I go out and look for a job? They're gonna say, well, what happened at your last job? Well, the rage mob got me fired. Well, what'd you do? Well, they said I was a racist. Oh, you're a racist, okay, yeah. Well, we're not gonna hire you because apparently you're, no, 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 they said I was a racist. Well, they said it, it must be real, right? This is never a good way for a society to function. We have to be able to talk to one another. We have to be able to point out that facts matter. Your feelings are real, but they're not always reliable. And right now, a lot of people are acting on their feelings. We need to get back to facts and we need to link arms. We need to go after racism wherever we find it. Not just against black people, by the way, against tons of people. By the way, there is no reverse racism. If somebody is being racist towards me, that's just plain old racism. And the last time that I checked, the best way to fight racism was not by adding more racism to the mix. The last time I checked, the best way to fight inequality was to look at what the inequality came from, not just to blame one factor. It's too convenient, it's easy to do, and it's most of the time very wrong. So thank you guys for your support, I appreciate it. I'll be making some more videos here soon, hopefully not anything about somebody trying to get me kicked out of serving at church for being a racist. I would have to change a lot about my life to actually become a racist, I, I don't even know what to do. So thank God I'm not. Love you guys, thanks.